Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to turn this raw Blender rendering to this, well, still a rendering but post-processed in Photoshop. I haven't seen many YouTube videos that simply show you how to take the basic rendering input from your 3D scene and simply improve it so it looks better. That's why I thought this video might be interesting to you because I'm gonna be using basically the most simple Photoshop uh, adjustment layers like exposure, uh, levels, curves, color balance. And I'm gonna be focusing on the interior scene specifically because it, well, comes from my interior visualization course for Blender 2.80. So it's basically gonna be a small chunk from one of the chapters I have prepared for the course. If you're interested, you can check out one of the links in the video description and the course will be still available at the discounted price for the next two or three weeks. So now let's just get along with the video, shall we? As you can see here, I'm using 8-bit image as a starting point for my post-processing in Photoshop because, well, we don't have that many contrasts within this image, so I don't feel like using 16-bit images necessary. I was already testing it, to be honest with you, and there was no difference. So let's start working. The first thing I always do is using the selective layers from here, and the first one I always go with is the exposure. So I'm increasing the brightness of my image just a little bit. So you can see I'm using the value of 25 here, which gives us a little bit of brightness here in the central area, but not too much, so we don't get those colors overburned. And after doing that, I'm adding the curves layer. And with two handles, I'm usually starting with the upper one, increasing the brightness just a little bit more. And then I add second handle here, which darkens those midtones just a bit. And in overall, that improves the contrast in my image. So you can see if I disable the curves layer, this is the effect. I think it's a little bit too strong, so I will reduce the opacity by, let's say, 35%. The next step is adding the color balance layer. And here we are going to look for the color balance we have here in the reference. So I'm going to start with midtones and play around with this slider, move it uh, left and right. You can do this by pointing your mouse cursor and using the scroll. To increase the increment, you just hold the shift key and you can now change this value by every 10 steps. So I think if we move towards the reds, that's not the thing we are looking for. Let's move slightly to the cyan color. And I think it's, well, it resembles just a little bit more the reference. Now I'm going to play with the yellow and blue values. Blue is definitely not the one we need to go with, so I would stick with the yellows and compare it to the reference. So I think we could reduce the cyan color just a little bit. Let's maybe keep it at 5. And now let's go to the shadows. And again, I'm just freely playing around with the handles with, which one of, with each one of the color uh, channels so I see if there is any one of them that influences the image the most significant way that I'm looking for so I would say maybe increasing the greens in the darker areas just a little bit might be necessary in our image let's maybe add just a little bit of reds so we get this wooden color a little bit into the reddish tone and as a final step um, I usually go with the blue tint in the highlights now it's a little bit too much so let's also reduce it to maybe four so with the color balance applied I'm now comparing both of the results and I'm also using the reference just to see I think we are kind of matching the look 
Um, the wooden color is a bit off maybe, but not that much in my opinion. So we pretty much nailed it. I would say maybe um, reducing the yellow here just a little bit. Let's maybe keep it at seven. I would say that really does it. So you can see if we disable all of the steps, the changes are quite significant, but not that big. If you just switch one layer after, after another, the changes aren't that big and you might not even notice them, especially the color balance. It's not that significant at the moment. And the, the way you should do post-processing is a little bit like with makeup. So you really don't want to overdo it. You prob Each one of you probably knows how a bad and overdone makeup looks like. And this is something we really want to avoid within our image. That's why I, I usually prefer to have a very good input, a raw rendering in a good quality. It's kind of the same, well, as in real life. We just want to do those slight steps one after another and just control what's happening in the image. We want to avoid those extreme effects like this one, for example. It might look kind of cool, but it's very amateurish and yeah, we definitely don't want to do this. So getting back to the actual work, um, another layer I'm using is the selective color layer. And what it allows me doing is fine tuning a uh, very narrow spectrum of color within the scene. So you can see if I use this slider, what changes within my scene is actually just the wooden color. And yeah, it's a very, very handy layer that allows you to almost hand pick a color you wanna fine tune. So let's, let's do it with the wood, but not that much as I'm doing right now. Um, let's maybe reduce the reds within this material just a little bit. You can see a bit of color flickering when I'm uh, this hiding and unhiding this layer. And let's also darken it just a little bit. Maybe like that. Now I'm gonna switch to the yellow color and you might think there's no yellow within our scene, but when I try modifying it. You can also see it re actually affects the red and green colors. I think it's a little bit, sh it's shifted a little bit too much toward greens in Photoshop in my opinion, but um, yeah, as with color balance, I suggest just playing around with the sliders, seeing what's happening around the scene and choosing the setting you, well, you feel the most comfortable with. So for example, if I move the magenta slider towards this area just a little bit. Let's see what happens if we move the yellow color. Yeah, I think keeping it around this area might also improve the image. And let's see the blacks as well. Maybe just a little bit like that. I'm gonna skip the other colors because we just want to fix the wooden material. So let's switch this area on and off. We can clearly see the difference. I think it's a little bit too much. So let's again decrease the opacity of this layer by 40%. And I would say that looks pretty, pretty good. Maybe it's still a bit too much. So I'm gonna decrease it to 40. And I would say I'm pretty happy with the result we have right now. So the next step, it's not necessarily something you have to do, but I like decreasing the saturation around my image just a little bit. So I usually go with 20% and then play with the opacity because 10% is, I don't think it's that visible. So yeah, instead of changing the opacity, let's just decrease it to 15%. And in order, I'm also going to decrease the opacity just a little bit. So it's not that, that visible. And one of the tricks you can use in, in order to increase a general contrast within the image is using the levels. So I'm going to move this handle 
by the value of 10 towards the center and I'm also going to move this handle by the value of 10. So this is what we are getting. It flattens out the end spectrum of this histogram. So we get, well, just a little bit more of contrast within the image. And if you asked me, that's basically it as for the color tweaking. So we can see if I disable all of the layers altogether, we can see the combined result. It's actually pretty significant. So this image looks, well, too washed out in my opinion and out of color. Once we apply our color correction, it really has this nice uh, feel, very similar to what we have in the reference, in my opinion at least. So the final two touches, one of them I always apply so I've just duplicated both of those layers. I'm now gonna merge them so we have a copy of our setup here and I'm gonna apply the sharpening to that merge layer. So I'm using the unsharp mask and the values I usually stick to within this resolution is 60% and 0 0.6 pixels. Once I do this, when we zoom into the image, by the way, you can see we could have disabled bump here, but let's leave it like this. It's not that visible. I'm just saying. <laughs> so if we disable this layer and enable it, you can see the image gets this touch of crispiness within those details, within the edges. I usually don't use it at 100%, reduce it to 70 or 60. So yeah, this is one of the touches I really like adding, but keep in mind, you really have to, you, you really need to have a noise free image in order for that to work properly. Because when you have noise, well, this will also increase its visibility. So yeah, please keep that in mind. And the final, final, final touch I like adding, not in every image, but let's see how it looks in this one, is the vignetting in the corners, so it's this darkening effect. Sometimes people overdo it. Um, the way I apply it is, as you could see, I've created a new layer, filled it with white color. The shortcut for that is Alt Backspace in Photoshop. Now I'm going to the filter, lens correction, and you can see this is what we have by default. I don't know why I can go full screen, but doesn't matter. Let's go to the custom settings here and you can see we have vignette settings sliders here. So I'm just using something quite rough like this, maybe, um, yeah, maybe something like that. Just apply OK and now I change the mix method of this layer to multiply. So we only get the, and the black colors, the dark colors to be visible, you can see how the effect changes our scene. So usually the maximum value I use for that is 30. So it's not that, well, brutal in in terms of influencing the rendering. I think 30% is definitely okay. So yeah, that would be it. Let me now switch to the black background so we can see the image better. I would say that's that's actually it for post-processing of that image. Since it's, it was a very good input material, we really didn't have to do that much around it to get this very, very nice photorealistic look. So thank you for watching and we will now see how to, well, we will try to get the same effect in Blender Compositor. So stay tuned. So, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I know it might have been a little bit stretched or maybe too slow at some points, but as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a part of the entire course, so I really wanted everyone to be able to follow it. It was just one of over 80 videos that are available in the course where I am explaining the entire process of making the interior visualization in Blender. We are still finishing the course, so be sure to get it at the discounted price. Link is in the video description. The course comes also with 10 and eventually with 12 interior scenes with over 200 Blender assets, so I think that's a pretty good deal. 
Remember, you can also support the Blender Development Fund because thanks to amazing people like you, this amazing piece of software, Blender, is becoming better and better every day. That's it for now, hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you in another one. Bye bye.